Welcome to a special edition of The Simple Podcast. I'm your host, Todd C. Slater, The Simple Investor. I wanted to put together a few facts with the recent release of the new Canadian budget and the impact it's going to have on investors of real estate. So again, this is one of those things that, you know, we still don't know everything, but for what we know, I'm hoping I can break it down for you briefly and give you kind of a little bit of peace on what's truly happening. And of course, listening to the fact that, you know, government's going to charge us more in taxes is never a good thing. But I do want to make sure everybody understands what they're doing and how they're doing it and who truly does get affected. So to start off, first and foremost, this will be implemented as far as we're being told on June the 25th of this year. So of course, like anything the federal government does, knee jerk reaction and they wanna jam it down our throats very quickly. So 60 days. Now, the one thing for all of you real estate investors, okay, we're not talking about cottage owners, we're talking about people that have rental properties. This should not start a panic sell, okay? You don't need to do that. Remember, if you're a real estate investor, the most important thing you should do is hold, hang on to it. We'll talk about your capital gains shortly. But the one thing is, is that if you are a real estate investor, you have a tenant in place, 60 days will never give you enough time to sell and have the tenant leave. So right now, based on the LTB conditions and everything that's going on, they've really put our back against the wall. So how do we navigate through this entire thing? Well, I do want to explain what's been implemented. So for those of you that don't quite get what this budget said, they really did try to target real estate investors because they were thinking that you know, too many real estate investors have come into the market and they're making oodles and oodles of money. Again, this is perception, not reality. So how do we work with these numbers? So they typically have talked about that capital gains. So that means the value increase from what you originally paid for the home or, or property, where whatever it is, normally was tax of 50% of the capital gains. Remember, this is not income tax number. This is actually a taxable amount. So when they said that up to $250,000 worth of capital gains, that would typically be a property, let's say that went from 500,000 to 750,000. Now there's your 250. Now what happens though is 50% of that is going to be taxable. So that means $125,000 of that increase is going to be taxable. Now, if you are an individual person that owns it, it's going to be based on your income tax rate that you pay currently for that existing year. So that's how the basic math works. Now they did talk about corporations and I'm going to talk about holding companies in a second, but when they talk about corporations, they are saying that they're also going to be having to pay capital gains. Now, that depends on what the structure of the corporation is. What do they do? Is this their business or are the properties actually deemed inventory? Again, we still don't have all the information, but let me circle around and give you an example on the screen of what we look at for what's happening. So if we take a look, so right now I'm going to talk about a taxpayer that ended up buying a property for 800,000 and let's say they sell it for $1.1 million. So that means they had a capital gains of value of $300,000. So when we take a look at the numbers and we'll pop it up on the screen, there we go. So they had a gain of 300 K now the taxable portion for the first amount. So the 250,000, that means that there's going to be a taxable portion of $125,000. So that's what you're going to pay taxes on. Now the remaining amount, the 50,000. So that's the difference between the 250 and 300, that 50,000 is now going to be considered the taxable amount at 66.6%, .6%, which gives us that $33,300. So that means that we are now calculating out our taxes based on 158,000 instead of the old rule, which would have been 150,000. Okay. That's that shift that they added to everything above 250. Now let's take a look at what this looks like for your actual taxation. So let's suppose your personal tax rate is 
30%. Again, this is a, just a pure number that we're, we're working with for an example. Now, the taxable portion on the capital gains based on the new rules, as we said, would be 158,000 that we're gonna tax at that 30%. So tax portion of the capital gain, new rules, 47,500. And so on the old rules, it would have been 150 and that would have made it 45,000. Okay, so those are the two differences. So when we hear this, and depending on the amount that's in being increased, so the real difference here is only about two and a half thousand dollars based on that tax rate, okay? so. When we do that, again, it's not a huge number, okay, at this time. So the difference in capital gains for the 300,000 with the new rules, with somebody that's paying 30% taxes is just $2.5,000, so $2,500. Now, let's, let's be clear, not everybody's gonna be paying only 30%, we know that. And so you're gonna have to use that factor. But as you can see, it's not as great as it sounds, meaning it's not as ominous. Now, I do want to talk about something very important, though, is the fact that a lot of people will turn around and have properties in a holding company, okay? And the thing about holding companies is if that's the primary business of the holding company, sometimes they will you'll be able to write it off as inventory, and you are now going to be working with a corporate tax rate. It's no longer capital gains, it's the entirety of the amount. And that would then turn around and let's say have a tax rate of 13%. It's a much lower number when you put it through a corporation. Okay, and this is why a lot of times people will be encouraged to turn around and put things in a hold co. So that's what we call a non-operating residential holding company. This is what the lenders prefer and it's a lot easier for your taxes. Now. Big picture on what's really happened here, and we can thank our federal government for turning around and trying to apply more pressure. Their idea here is that they want to turn around and we look at, you know, what we would call our middle income. But you know what's disappointing is the fact that they can't even recognize that a lot of our middle income earners are the ones who actually own individual properties. So immediately they want to come after them. You know, the government is threatened by people that are trying to secure their future. And this is just one more step. They're going after the bigger corporations that hold assets like this, and they want to dispose of the assets. So they want to affect their bottom line. They want to affect yours and mine as Canadians. Okay. Now the primary residence, so we're clear, still is capital gains exempt. So your home that you live in has no capital gains on it when you go to sell. The other thing that will be affected though, of course, is things such as vacation properties, cottage country, you know, if you have one a chalet, things like that, those are deemed secondary properties, so they will be affected by this. But if we take a look at the picture of the best real estate investors, we know not to sell. And for those of you that have owned for more than 10 years, you know what, you figured it out. The best thing you can do is refinance, don't worry about capital gains, because you're never gonna have to incur it and we're gonna pass it on to the next generation. But the people that turn around and let's say have bought over the last few years, even if we talk about the new market, well, you should you know, take solace of the fact that you probably haven't made $250,000 on the property. So you have nothing to worry about. Again, I don't want people to create a knee jerk reaction. The idea of investment real estate is hold long term. Yeah, the government's not making it any easier for us. They're making all sorts of excuses. They, as they said, they basically want to turn around and steal from the rich and give to the poor. Well, you know what? That works in movies and normally the guy has a feather in his hat. His name is Robin Hood. But the fact is, is that the people that own investment property are not the rich in most cases, and they're not evil. So this is one of my problems with this latest budget. There's going to be more that's going to come out of it, and I'm happy to talk about it. Do me a favor. Uh, leave me a comment if you want. I'm happy to, you know, you know, vet all kinds of comments about what people are perceiving about this. And if you want to follow me, that'd be great, because I'm going to keep you up to date, especially when we have a situation like this where the government wants to try on real estate investment and basically deter people for securing their future. It's one of the most important things we should be doing as Canadians, and I'll talk to you soon.